Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I think this video might be extra salty. Sometimes I get a little bit ticked off. I'm uh, really not angry at all, but uh, specifically on reviewing lenses. Um, lenses and I don't drink alcohol. I have a few, few glasses of wine in my day. And of course, wine is supposed to be good for you, generally speaking, I hear. Um, but in the case of wines, um, and I'm going to make this perfect analogy with lenses. One would not judge a wine, right, by its alcoholic content, right? Um, some of these wines, and I've, of course, never bought one. I've tasted one once from a rich guy. Um, they have a certain je ne sais quoi. You know, they have a nature to them that uh, makes them either rare or both rare and ineffable. They have certain characteristics that make them both desirable and collectible. Hmm? Yeah, like um, certain years, because the weather could be radically changed. I, th I think you get the point, right? Specifically, I'm making this analogy to lenses. And uh, I recently reviewed the 16 to 80, and man, there was a lot of people that got their f lacy little panties in a wad on some of the photography. Well, I got, I own these 16 to 55 to 8. And that tattooed, bald Uncle Fester asshole, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Because this, he keeps, he said this uh, new 16 to 80 is just um, a perfect zoom, which I don't say that. I only know of four perfect zooms, and certainly the only one from Fujifilm. And uh, when I make bold statements like that, I actually mean them. Because when I make a really bold statement, people, like, just put my feet to the fire. Yeah, they really do. And I meant it when I said that. And when I actually judge a lens, how often am I looking in the corners on sharpness? The answer is enough to answer the questions. Yes, I find it interesting. A lot of people take pictures, specifically portraiture, and they're worried about uh, uh, vignetting in the corners, and they go and add vignetting in Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One, uh, thereby uh, completely nulling out their worry about vignetting on the lens. Of course, not everybody does that. You don't do that for landscapes, but... You know, there is a nature of lenses that, uh, and many, many different criteria, and of course, there are specific uh, uh, lenses, like for reproduction work. You're going to take a picture of a very fine painting. You want that lens to be sharp as piss, because it's really important. What you're not doing is something artistic. You're taking a picture of uh, something, and you want exact reproduction. You want that sucker to be sharp as piss, and you're not worried about micro contrast. You're not worried about uh, a whole lot else, yeah, other than fine resolution. Lines per millimeter, yeah, right, right, right. And when I actually make a statement about a lens, considering that I've had so many countless thousands of lenses pass through my hand, more so than any of the rest of the YouTube photography channels, certainly more so than the very popular guy with over a million subscribers who tests lenses by taking pictures of brick walls, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or another guy, and I think he's actually funny. He'll actually talk, he compares lenses uh, to penises, and he's like, oh my, you know, wang up. He's like, really funny guy. That doesn't really tell you anything about whether you should buy that lens. I'm pretty sure brick walls and making juvenile jokes about lenses is not exactly that beneficial when it comes to you spending your hard-earned money on a lens. And I'm extremely pragmatic and practical. But like one of those uh, wine snobs that, uh, you know, can uh, sniff out, like a hog can sniff out truffles, sniff out a good lens. Or, because here's a perfect example. I uh, recently reviewed a month or so ago the uh, Tamron, uh, the new 35mm f1.4, and I basically said that lens was the tits, the bomb, the bomb diggity. I'm sure I made Tamron a lot of money. And a lot of people say, ah, oh, you're so full of crap. You know, you just like said, this lens is the best thing ever. It's like, yeah, I actually bought it. It is. It's everything and a bowl of Rice Krispies on top and with whipped cream. And uh, then every the guy that everybody respected, I think it was Roger Ciala. Roger Ciala's over at Lens Rentals. He came out with a review and he always like takes six copies of something and he tests it. And he, his uh, conclusion was something like, oh my God, this lens is amazing. This is off the hook. This is, like, unbelievable. So, yeah, I, w I was right. And uh, I, I, I like people to spend their money wisely. Yeah. And uh, when I review a lens, I actually take a lot of things into consideration. Like, if it's a macro lens, 
really good autofocus and high resolution is paramount. I'm not worried about micro contrast. I'm not really worried about bokeh because when you got a macro lens, you really don't give a shit about bokeh. Unless you're going to use that macro lens. In some cases, that's true for portraiture, like the 80 millimeter Fujifilm lens. You can use that lens for portraiture. Ain't no problem there. It's not that super fast as far as uh, f-stop. It's 2.8, but it does give nice, does have cat's eye book. It's not the best, most ideal portraiture lens. But for a macro lens, I've owned more macro lenses than God. And I do mean that literally. I am a macro lens slut. And that's the best macro lens I've ever owned or tested. And I just love the hell out of that lens. Probably my second favorite Fujifilm lens of all time in the X series. But yeah, when I recently got done reviewing the 16 to 80, you know, when I actually said it's the best zoom lens ever, I mean, the bokeh is amazing. Uh, saturation is incredible. It's just sharp as piss. The autofocus is super. I said it's the best. I said it is a perfect zoom lens. That's uh, the words I used. And, uh, Oh, man, a lot of people on uh, photography forums, man, they really got their diapers and their their lacy panties in a wad. How dare you say that? I mean, it can't be better than my 16 to 55 to 8. I mean, what the hell does he know? I don't know. I own every X-Series lens made. Mm, yeah. And I've tested more lenses than God. Whether you hate me for saying that or you think it's egotistical, I don't care because it's actually true. Yeah. And uh, the one thing, well, it's not the only thing, but one other thing that pisses me off is that uh, some people think when you do a lens review, and, you know, it's nice to do a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons, you know, I actually do go out there and hoof it with the lens, and uh, I give it a lot of deep thought before making a final review because, man, people crucify me if I get a lens review wrong. They do. And uh, all these people, not all these people, but a lot of them, they really think that there's only one thing that matters when a lens. You know, kind of like I said, you know, would you judge a wine by how much alcohol it's got in it? Probably not. You probably judge like, man, this is smooth. It's, I'm not a wine drinker. I'm not an alcohol drinker. This is uh, this lens. This wine has a je ne sais quoi that is, you know, notes of caramel. It's very smooth and rich, and uh, you know, it's just it's exquisite. It is par excellence. Yes. I take an approach to lenses exactly the same way, you know? Now, a hobo, a wino, and that is really what a lot of people in the photography forums are. They are lens hobos. Let me repeat that. They are lens hobos or lens drunkards. Because when, you know, they, like, hold their cup out in the streets, yeah, and they get, like, a few bucks in there, they they stagger into the liquor store, and, you know, they just, oh, what's the shame of shit you got with some alcohol? <laughs> They're looking for, you know, cheap stuff with high alcohol content that will get them smashed. Smashed. Right? And that's what a lot of these photography forum people are when it comes to lens reviews. And, uh, yeah. And they are exactly like this. I'm going to do an imitation. I'm not really good at imitations. But this is my imitation of everybody on the uh, photography forums uh, when it comes to... Uh, asking about or being interested in lenses. There's only one thing they want to know, unfortunately, just like a hobo who only wants high alcoholic content beverage. This is what they want. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to try to get this, uh, I'm going to try to get this, uh, uh, this accurate for you. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. It's a chop. 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 God damn it. It's a chop. 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 This is what happens when you drink too much coffee late at night. <coughs> that is uh, <clears throat> um, my parody of uh, the photographic online community. You see, I caught a lot of hell for that 16 to 80 review. But just like that Tamron 3514 review that I did very accurately, I will be proven right yet again. Does that sound egotistical? Does that sound conflated? You know, it might sound that way. And yet, I actually take lens reviews seriously. Now, the other error that they make is that when I uh, engage in a little bit of humor in my videos, which I do because I'm a pretty boring person in reality, yeah? 
Yeah, reading ancient dead languages and Greek and Pali is not very exciting. So I try to spice it up a little bit with a little bit of humor. It's like, oh, this guy's not taking this lens review seriously. You know, he's funny, kind of, sort of, not much, but I just don't trust him. Yeah. Yeah. Of the top 10 YouTube photography channels, wherever I fall in there, the only one with no affiliate links, the only one not selling anything, and more experience with lenses than the top 20 or 30 combined. Yeah. Yeah. You should take that into consideration. You should stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Was I succinct? Was I abundantly clear? I think I got a little bit of dust on my lenses here. I see some dust on my lenses. <laughs> Fixed it.